Welcome to Across the Balkans. Great to have you with us on the show. I'm Ludovica Brignola. Last week, several heads of state, top EU officials and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky attended the Balkan summit in Athens to discuss the region's security and its EU path. On the sidelines of the meeting, the leaders of nine Balkan countries signed the Athens Declaration, expressing support for Ukraine's territorial integrity. The document emphasizes that Western Balkan countries and Ukraine should be accepted as full members of the European community to ensure peace, security and stability in the region. Among the countries that signed the Athens Declaration is Russia's longtime ally, Serbia. Since the war began, Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic has repeatedly condemned Russia's attacks on Ukraine but has fallen short of imposing sanctions. He has instead sought to maintain friendly relations with both Russia and the West due to the country's aspiration to join the EU. Serbia also joined a Ukraine-led platform on the reintegration of Crimea a day after Zelensky and Vucic described their meeting in Athens as good and open. So is Belgrade moving away from Moscow? And how will the Athens declaration impact Russian influence in the Balkans? To further discuss the issue, I'm joined now from Skopje by Sergej Majstorovic. He is a chairperson of the board of the European Policy Centre and a member of the Balkans in Europe Policy Advisory Group, BIEPAG. Thank you very much for joining us today. Right, so the document states that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is a pivotal moment for Europe, creating a new level of awareness of shared principles, unity uh, and a common future within the EU. What's the significance, first of all, of this declaration? First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to be your guest and um, thank you for your question. It's a, it's a straightforward question, but it's not easy to, uh, to provide a simple answer. Um, the, the, the reason why um, um, heads of uh, states and governments uh, from the Balkans and the uh, eastern uh, countries and some EU member states met in the, the Athens was to commemorate uh, the 20th anniversary of the uh, Thessaloniki summit where the, um, uh, the, the European perspective for the Western Balkans was for the first time uh, mentioned. Um, the declaration that was um, adopted was basically a statement by the Balkan countries and together obviously with the, uh, with the representatives of Moldova and Bulgaria and, and other Balkan countries, um, which is very interesting because some of them uh, are, the majority of them are candidates and potential candidates to join the EU. Some of them are EU members, some of them are NATO uh, members and having all of them together and agreeing on the text of the statement was uh, an important um, uh, step forward uh, in itself. Now, what does this uh, statement include? I would dare to say that there are three aspects which are very, very significant for the statement. One, uh, it provides a, a clear and unequivocal support to the Ukraine, its territorial integrity, uh, President Zelensky's peace proposal in line with the principles of the UN uh, Charter mm -hmm. and uh, an agreement there uh, there can be no impunity for the war crimes. The second aspect is um, uh, concerning the 20 years old uh, promise made in Thessaloniki in 2003. Uh, and basically this part reconfirms uh, what has already been decided 20 years ago that Western Balkan countries uh, uh, future lies within the EU, EU membership. And obviously, your, Ukraine and Moldova are added to this group due to the obvious geopolitical reasons. And the third aspect of, of the statement, uh, which is um, um, uh, stated at the end, um, provide us with, uh, with the information um, that participants recognize the need to re-energize and refocus enlargement process making it more tangible and credible, as, as it says. Unfortunately, right. beyond this diplomatic meta-language, uh, the public remains uh, uninformed of the substance uh, of the mentioning, mentioned re-energizing and refocusing. And Sergeant, on your first point then that you made, uh, nine Balkan countries expressed support uh, for Ukraine's territorial integrity during the summit in Athens. What does that mean for the region as a whole? Because the region suffered very much as a consequence of the war in Ukraine. We actually talked about it a few weeks ago on this show, increased fuel smuggling in the region, illicit funds as well, financial crimes. What does it mean for the region? 
I think it, it was very obvious that uh, we have a full consensus regarding Ukraine's territorial integrity uh, in the re region. This is very, very positive. Uh, no one is uh, contesting Ukraine's sovereignty over Crimea and uh, other secessionist, secessionist regions like Donetsk, Lugansk, uh, Zaporozhye, and Kershon. And this is this is very important. All countries have supported Ukraine in the United Nations and voted for condemnation of Russia's aggression, mm -hmm. uh, requiring withdrawal of its troops from the Ukrainian um, territory. However, Concerning this particular statement, I'm afraid that different countries in the region read the support of territorial integrity uh, through uh, of, of Ukraine through different lenses. Right. This is particularly related to Serbia's position on the status of Kosovo and Kosovo's perception of its international status. Right, Serbian and they view this in, in, in can, different ways. Um, exactly. Countries exactly. in the region, uh, because, uh, as you said, I mean, the war has really forced the countries having traditional ties with uh, Moscow into a very delicate balancing act at this point between Russia and Western Europe. And you just mentioned Serbia, uh, one of Russia's closest allies. What does it mean uh, for Serbia what, um, at this point? What would the, the country do? Well, um, I think that only for those who are, who are not informed uh, uh, would be a surprise that Serbia is uh, uh, at this moment not joining the EU sanctions against uh, Russia. I think that the um, uh, situation in Serbia, with, with regard to Serbia, is quite opposite, and that uh, position, this position has been um, quite transparent and quite consistent and um, easily predictable. Serbia's unwillingness to join the sanctions against Russia, but also against China and some other countries, is motivated purely by Russia's role uh, as a permanent member of the UN Security Council and its influence on the future status of Kosovo discussion. Uh, the Serbian leadership is, is balancing um, from the start of Russia's aggression on, on Ukraine while voting in the General Assembly of the United Nations uh, and condemning Russia's uh, aggression. Uh, voting, voting for suspension of Russia in the UN's Commission for Human Rights and in the Council of Europe um, against Russia, they are analyzing costs and benefits of each of these steps in a very pragmatic way. Recently, um, uh, referring to, uh, to, to increased uh, pressure on Serbia to introduce sanction, President Vucic said that uh, Serbia will keep its neutral position as long as it can mm. and as long as the costs become unbearable. Right. So it is obvious that uh, Serbia uh, reacts to to pressure that um, and that eventually it will introduce mm. sanctions. But the question is, uh, when exactly? Right. A neutral position, possibly difficult to keep at this point. As you said yourself, uh, territorial integrity uh, means something different uh, for certain countries, such as Serbia. But does this, does this Athens declaration at this point mean that Belgrade is definitely moving away uh, from Moscow and siding more with the EU, in your opinion, moving forward, and not really? Uh, one thing is clear. Um, European Union is traditionally Serbia's first and the most important economic partner. Majority of uh, Serbia's global trade is performed with the EU. EU member states are major investors and grow job creators. Thus, when we when you look at this relationship from a pragmatic point of view, there is no doubt that Serbia is oriented towards the EU. However, Serbian leadership has a serious uh, uh, problem to persuade the EU member states that uh, it is a credible candidate for the membership. Uh, issues related to functioning of democratic institutions, media freedom, fight against corruption, organized crime are hampering Serbia's EU integration uh, process. Mm -hmm. And stat status of Kosovo is an additional issue that hangs over Serbia's uh, EU, EU perspective. Right, so th 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 there are open issues which, which burden mutual relationships. Open issues, and one of them being, uh, on top of everything else, I mean, Serbia joined a Ukraine-led platform on the reintegration of Crimea. Uh, how will this impact the relationship between Russia and Serbia? I'm not expecting significant changes. Just a couple of days after Athens uh, uh, meeting the uh, and participation of Serbia at the crime, Crimea initiative, President Vucic met with the, with the Russian ambassador in Belgrade and on his Instagram profile explained uh, to the public that uh, he discussed regional and global issues with ambassador mm -hmm. and that Serbia and Russia will continue to maintain cordial right. relations uh, with Russia. So there is a there is a mutual interest, I would say, in maintaining the image of, uh, of countries right. which are 
cooperating at this moment. And that's clear. Very quickly, we're running out of time, but I do want to ask you, you said that the EU is Serbia's most important economic partner. At the same time, the country is almost entirely reliant on Russia for oil and gas. It's also its main energy companies um, are under Russian major majority ownership. Do you think as Vucic really showed support for both Ukraine and Crimea, as we said, could Russia cut supplies to the country like it did with the European countries? I don't think that uh, it is in Russia's interest to miss the opportunity to, to have an important foothold in the in the biggest country in the region. Uh, quite mm -hmm. contrary, Serbia got subsidized price of gas due to Russia's interest to remain present uh, in the um, uh, in the region. But on the other hand, uh, Serbia is diversifying its its gas supply. Uh, connection with the um, European Union's pipe, 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 uh, sponsored pipeline in Alex Alexandropoli. Uh, Serbia is a part of it. Uh, Serbia is building an interconnection with Bulgaria, which is also sponsored by the EU. And Serbia is negotiating with Western partners uh, to completely restructure the, its energy policy. So one could say that uh, in the long run, Serbian leadership aim is to escape from the Russia's uh, uh, bear hug. And eventually, when this, real, when this becomes reality, I'm sure that Russia's shares uh, in Serbia and the region will devalues significantly. Sergeant Maisorovic, thank you very much for being with us today. Let's look at other stories making headlines in the region this week. European Council President Charles Michel has urged the European Union to make a bold move and accept new members to the bloc by 2030. Speaking in Slovenia on Monday, Michel said it's time for countries that have been waiting for EU membership for almost 20 years to be given a clear goal. Among Balkan countries, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Moldova, Serbia, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Albania have candidate status, while Kosovo has been waiting for its application to be approved since last year. Michel called on both sides to take necessary steps and be ready for an enlargement in seven years. Top US diplomat Gabriel Escobar has described North Macedonia as a strategic partner and close friend that both the EU and the US need. During his visit to Skopje last week, Escobar urged North Macedonia's government and opposition to move ahead with constitutional changes that would pave the way for its EU membership. Among their conditions set for North Macedonia to enter the EU is the inclusion of the Bulgarian minority in its preamble. Otherwise, Sofia has the right to veto the bid, as it did in 2020. And Moldova celebrated its Independence Day on August 27th. President Maya Sandu marked the day by honouring those who proclaimed independence from the Soviet Union in 1991 and said that the task now is to take Moldova into the European Union. The country was granted candidate status last year in the wake of the Ukraine war and is now waiting for the bloc's decision on whether it can start negotiations.